In our previous video, we talked about the underworld in its nine individual regions. This time we will cover the upper layers above the earth, or the 13 heavens. But first, some context. In Mexica lore, the primordial god of duality, Ometeot, split itself into two, Ometecutli and Omezihuatl, in order to begin the process of creation. They immediately gave birth to four children, Tezcatlipoca, Quetzalcoatl, Huitzilopochtli, and Chipetotec. These four gods wasted no time and got to work. They organized the universe, shaped the earth, brought forth more gods, and of course, created humanity. The stories say that they couldn't do much for the first 600 years, because the primitive monster Zipatli, a savage half-crocodile, half-fish creature, roamed the abyss and destroyed everything the gods created. Working together, the gods managed to kill it and build the universe using its carcass. The 13 heavens were made using its head, the earth out of its torso, and the nine underworld regions using its tail. They also constructed horizontally. The earth, known as Tlatikpak, was square-shaped, surrounded by divine water and bordered by walls that reached the heavens. The gods also stretched Tlatikpak across the four winds, which became the four cardinal points we know today. Each cardinal point was ruled by one of the main gods. In the north, representing the color black, ruled Tezcatlipoca. In the south, with the color blue, reigned Huitzilopochtli. In the west, with the color white, governed Quetzalcoatl. And finally, in the east, with the color red, ruled Chipetotec. In the middle of the four, there was a center point that joined earth and sky, the underworld and the heavens, and it symbolized humanity's connection with the universe. It was ruled and guarded by Xutikutli, god of fire and warmth. One way to look at this connection to the heavens and earth on our world is the Mesoamerican practice of building step pyramids. These pyramids and temples serve for more than just sacrificial altars. They also serve for symbolic storytelling. One example of this is the stone of Coyolchacui, placed at the base of the Great Temple, aka El Templo Mayor. He was placed there to tell the story of Huitzilopochtli's victory over his siblings. It was also used for the ritualistic sacrifice of young women, but my point still stands. Maybe in a future video we can cover more about this topic. But anyways, now we can take a closer look at each heaven. Above our heads is the first heaven, called Ilwikalt Mesitlan meaning the place where the moon moves. This is where Metzli, the moon, makes her journey across the sky. Ehekalt, the wind, moves the clouds with his breath. And Tlaloc, god of thunder, pierces them to make rain. Known by a different name, this is also where the souls of the drowned end up. Let's move on to the second heaven, Ilwikalcitlalcuauco, or the place where the stars move. Here, you will find the two armies of the stars, the 400 northern stars, the Tzetzen Mimishkoa, and the 400 southern stars, the Tzetzen Witznawak. This heaven was also the home of the Sitlaltonak, known to us as the Milky Way, as well as the many constellations. Now on to the third heaven, Ilwikal Tonatiutlan, the place where the sun moves. This is where Tonatiu, the sun, travels from east to west before sinking into the underworld. This is also one of the houses of the dead, the place where the warrior souls live. The fourth heaven is called Ilwikald Witzlan, the place of the big star. This is where Sitlalpol, or the great star, known to us as the planet Venus, lives. This is also the residence of the god of dawn and light. Tlahuitzcalpantecutli. On to the fifth heaven, Ilhuicalmamalcuaco, the place where comets move. As the name suggests, this is the home of the comets and shooting stars. 
They are called Sitlalimpopoca or smoking stars. Sitlamina are those that have a long tail, and she wilt are those that have a coma. The sixth heaven is next, Ilwikal Jajaukuauko, the place where darkness moves. Others call this layer the greenish black region. This is where the god Descatlipoca lives and uses his powers to bring nighttime everywhere. The next heaven is Ilwikal Xochocuauco, the place where the sun rises and shows its face. This is also the blue region, as it is the home of Huitzilopochtli, god of war, sacrifices, and the lord of the south. Moving on to the eighth, Ilwikal Nanatskaloyan, the place where storms form. Here, tempests are created and sent to earth. Although this realm is ruled by the god of frost, cold, and human misery, it's Lakolioki, or crooked knife. Tlaloc also makes an appearance in this layer to help its Lakolioki shape the storms. The ninth heaven is next, Ilwikal Tositakuauco, also known as the place where light moves. This is also known as the region of white, as this is the residence of Quetzalcoatl, the god of life, knowledge, and lord of the west. The Tsitsimime are also found here. They were skeleton women that bring evil to mankind, especially during solar eclipses, and were foretold to end humanity one day. Next is the tenth heaven, Ilwikal Teokosaukuoko, the place where the sun orients itself. This is also known as the Yellow Region, where the western abode of Tonatiu, the sun, is found. Though other sources mention that it is actually the eastern home of the sun, where it lingers before heading west. And this version would make sense if you take into account what goes on in the next region. The eleventh heaven is Ilwikal Teotlacuauco, the place where warmth moves. It is also known as the Red Region, as this is the place where the sun shows its red face, i.e. twilight. It is the abode of the god of fire, Shutikutli, and Shantiko, the goddess of homes and herds, and the mistress of volcanoes. The twelfth heaven, Ilwikal Teteokan, or the place where the gods roam, was the main residence of the four creator gods, Tezcatlipoca, Xipetotec, Quetzalcoatl, and Huitzilopochtli. The gods live here and remain here, but manage to project themselves elsewhere at the same time. They are also capable of taking new identities by putting on masks or faces. In this realm, the primeval gods govern our world, create and destroy, do and undo, as nothing is eternal and is ever-changing. And finally, we have the thirteenth heaven, Ilwikal Omeyokan, the place of duality. This is the residence of the Lord of Duality, Ometeld, where everything that exists is conceived. And the reason for its name is because the main god brought forth itself by splitting into the divine couple, Ometekutli and Omesiwald, its masculine-feminine duality. This realm is also where the souls of the babies who died at birth ended up, nurtured by the nurse trees and watched over by the creator couple. And there you have them, the 13 heavens. The Mexica could not be happy with just one. They gotta catch them all. That was a terrible joke, who wrote that? But seriously, originally there were only nine heavens instead of 13. I could not find any reasons for this change, as having nine heavens would have balanced the nine underworld regions. But a lot of information is missing, and all we know comes from just a few codexes. But what is known is that all the 13 heavens were, and still are, of great importance in Mexica lore, as each had its own ruler and unique purpose. This makes it part of one of the most rich and complex cosmologies in the New World. Anyway, thank you for listening until the end. I hope you have a pleasant evening, and I'll see you in the next video.